So DeepSeek are back with a brand new model, DeepSeek Prover V2, which is an advanced reasoning model for mathematics. Now, before you jump away thinking this is about maths, it's not. Mathematics, right? Coding is kind of like maths. So it should be really good at coding and we're going to test that today and I'm going to show you how you can use this for free as well. So DeepSeek have three variations of models. They have, as you can see here, the Prover V2, which is the brand new advanced formal math reasoning. They also have R1, which is the reasoning model just for text generation. And then they have V3, which is their base model, i.e. the chat model, just a normal chat bot. So basically this DeepSeek Prover V2, it came out of nowhere, it was dropped on GitHub, like no big press release, just GitHub, which is pretty cool. And if we look, I've got a little summary from our pal ChatGPT about what it is. So Prover V2, it's an open source AI model for formal theorem proving. So basically it's for theory, mathematical theory. Capable of generating fully formalized mathematical proofs. Now I did give it a little test out and uh, it didn't look very good for mathematical proofs for me, but I must admit from a glance, I don't even know what it's talking about. I was just testing it against a picture that I seen online. So anyway, if we go back here, they have two variants of the model. They have the seven billion parameter model and 671 billion parameter model. 671 billion is crazy. But anyway, they're both open weight, meaning they're essentially like open source kind of, but not really. Basically, open weight means that you can see and download all the parameters so you can run the model, but open source and code means more that you can actually see and interact with the code without the training data and stuff. Open weight isn't open source. It just means that you can use it, run it locally, which is still cool. Now they have two models, they have a lightweight model and then an MOE architecture model. MOE is for mixture of experts. If you imagine, it's kind of like a brain where your entire brain doesn't light up fully for every single task you do. Little parts of your brain light up more than others for other parts. That's like a mixture of experts model. And in this mixture of experts architecture, you only have 37 billion active um, per token against the 671 billion total that you have. So you have 670 where, where am I here? You have all of this, 670 billion, and you can only use like this much at a time, pretty much. So, trained using synthetic data, which is pretty cool, um, and reinforcement learning for the fine tuning, i.e., um, basically, it's, uh, I realise I didn't have a good description for this, but essentially here, that looks already a bit um, complex, but basically, you have an agent which does stuff, and then if it does well, it gets rewarded, if it does... Uh, not well, it doesn't, and it means that it then moves towards the reward, essentially, right? Now, for performance, as you can see, it's actually pretty good, right? And if we look at how it compares to the other models here, that it shows you it's better than the rest of them, but it doesn't compare to major models, only other prover models, because that's its specialty. So, um, why it matters, it's the first scalable open source theorem prover. And so people are thinking now that this is going to be really cool to use for coding and stuff like that and for maths because if you think like, why would you use it, right? Well, for coders, it's better for bug finding because it's mathematical, right? It can break down your code. It can be great for Python, math heavy scripts, etc., right? As you can imagine. For data engineers and cloud engineers, all the stuff you're doing essentially is some variation of mathematics. So it's really good for that. Content creators like me, it's good. Technical people, you know, because it's going to be technical stuff is essentially an abstraction of mathematical thinking. And then for normal people, it's good for breaking down math problems. When you are, you know, filing your taxes or something, right? You want to check something out. Or whatever it may be. Spreadsheets, formulas. You want to understand a concept in AI or math or statistics, etc. Right? But don't use it for, as it says here, basically for creative work or for writing. So anyway, with all that in mind, we're going to go and check it out. If you want to use it, there's two ways that uh, I've found that you can use it. One of them is paid for, so on Open Router. And on here, you can see that there are prices below here. So we'll just scroll down a little bit. You can see there's a couple of prices there, and that's to use this um, API. But you're probably not going to really be using it unless it blows or socks off in editing because uh, Gemini is free for the first so many calls. So it makes no sense to use this. Um, not a very large context window either, dare I say. Um, but it is pretty cheap, it's not too bad. Additionally, we have it here on Hug and Face. So Open router, by the way, is just a, a place basically you can go and use a bunch of models. If we go on models, you can see here that we have all these models and some of them is all you get for free, which is pretty cool. And you can include them um, into like row code or something. So like in VS code, you could add it into row code and have your little chat assistant here that basically helps you code. And that can all be done via Open router, which is uh, pretty cool. 
where's it going here? Open router, there you go. Bam, you can use like Quine, for example. If you don't know how to use this stuff, quick Google, but basically RU code that's a LLM that assists you. It's like an AI agent. We also talk about implied AI, which is my school community, which we'll get onto later on anyway. So the other place we can use it is Hugging Face. Now here it's completely free. So um, Hugging Face place for models and stuff. But when you come here, the way you can use it is go to Open Playground down here. Click on Open Playground and it'll open up this, which is the playground I had open here. It'll get you to sign up or sign in. Then you create a free API token and then you go from there. You can see the model, which is uh, it's actually behind my head. Wait, I'll move me for one sec. Yep. You can see the model here. Da -da -da. Let me move myself back up. Sorted. Um, so what we're going to test it on today is not math because A, it's boring, but B, I can't even fact check it. It's just going to be a nightmare. So instead, we're going to check it out for coding. So I've already checked some of it out for coding here, but we're going to do it as a live demo instead to actually get a feel for it. So if we clear all of this stuff here to type into it, you just add a message as I've done in here. You can also add system prompts. Um, etc and save different kind of system prompts as like characters but anyway we have here we can paste that in we've got gemini open up so we can actually see stuff in the canvas and then we're going to get chat gpt open up to and we'll open up a new chat we'll do four mini high close that there we go looking good so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to test out how it can build some websites so i'm over here on applied ai which is my school community where i take you essentially from zero to apply an AI. That's the whole mission here. We have AI foundations, AI agents, tech foundations, just to get you started. Then tools to keep you up to date with the latest tools and models, such as this one here. My entire prompt base, workflows, templates, using AI agents that you can use off the bat, and masterclass, and then stuff about AI content too, which is pretty cool. So if we go to prompt base, inside here, we have a bunch of different uh, prompts. So I've got game generation, single page websites, research and strategy, and then just some some standard prompts or nice, simple, easy ones that we can we can give it a test for. So first of all, I think let's generate some game. So I think that this one would be cool. So interact. Oh, actually, it's maths. So let's do gravity and bounce physics demo. So for here, the idea is we want a ball to fall. Let me paste that and send that in here. We want a ball to fall and bounce on the ground as if it was real life, right? Now, sometimes when you try this with really bad models, basically it just hits the ground and then it just stops bouncing. Other ones, it will just keep falling through or whatever, just dodgy log game logic. But the idea here is we're hoping that it will actually bounce properly. So, include some physics. And there we go, it's already started coming back, which is actually rapid. Gemini, here's Gemini doing, still kind of figuring stuff out. ChatGPT is still, oh no, that's done. That's pretty fast to be fair. Um, can I edit in Canvas and then we'll go and preview? So this is ChatGPT. Da, 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 da. There we go. Just as I was telling you, it just falls and stops, which it's uh, not supposed to do. It's supposed to then bounce. Disappointing there, mate. And then we have here. Oh, I didn't even click on Canvas. Boo. So what I'll do instead is we will copy the code, go to VS Code, and I'll just paste it into Gemini here. Save that. And then we'll open it up in here in downloads. So we'll go Gemini. Let's see. Bounce. There we go. Right, only does one bounce. That's pretty disappointing. Let me open up Prover and we'll do the same for Prover here. So we'll copy it, this code that it's given me and we'll go and paste it into Prover. Paste that in here. Let's open that up. Check it out. Whoa. So I mean, it's got the worst graphics out of all of them. Easy peasy. But like, also, the worst action, I think. Or, well, hmm, I don't, maybe the best physics action, to be fair, because it doesn't bounce like a bouncy ball. It just falls like a ball and just like like a lead, kind of. But, but it actually bounces a couple of times. So I'm actually really pretty impressed by that so far. Right, so, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Don't judge a bit by its cover. But that's interesting because it's a physics, it's a maths one and the physics problem, that's pretty cool. So let's see if we can find another one to give it a, a try with. Um, so, let's see here. Produce a single HTML displaying a particle system effect. Generate a thousand white particles. Uh, so we add a slow continuous rotation to the particle system. 
Sounds cool. Let's copy that one in. Paste this in. We'll select Canvas so we can run it in here this time. We'll do the same for ChatGPT. Cancel that out. Send that in. Then we'll do the same here for this. And after this, we'll then go and look at an actual normal website and see how it gets on with that too. I don't suspect it'll be too good considering the graphics that we've seen here, but we'll see. That's how it's better to try it for games and things where it needs like a game engine or like a physics engine or something. So here we have Gemini's rotating particle sphere. That looks really quite cool. I actually really like that. That's cool, man. ChatGPT, how are you getting on? Let's play you and see. It should just have the kind of same effect if it's worked properly. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it looks pretty similar. Pretty much identical. So let's see if it can create and render it properly for a Repal Prover V2. Let's copy this. We'll paste that in here. Bam. And then we'll open up Prover. There we go. Oh, hey, Provers, it's cool. I know it's just a zoomed in version, but it has, it's gotten the, oh, this is not going to load properly. It has gotten the function correct. It's just faster and I'm more zoomed in. Although the middle doesn't look to be rendering unless it's just so far away that it's moving differently. I think I might like this one better, to be fair. Yeah, I'm honestly pretty impressed by Prover so far. So I think what we need to do then is actually get um, a single page website and see how it gets on. So what will we do here? Let's go and create a... Da, 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 da. Um, there's a cool one. Where is it? Let's do a SAS landing page. Or should we? Hmm. Let's do a portfolio website. We'll see. Um, and then we'll just say it's for physics or something, see what it comes up with. So we'll paste this in and we'll add in a little bit there and say um, our projects. We'll change that to say the projects should be real life physics or math projects. But let's send that one in. Gemini, it's not going to let us do any more, but that's fine. We'll just go to yeah, Studio and download the HTML. So yeah, Studio here, we can use it for completely for free. So you can see we're on 2.5, let's flash preview. And then Pro Preview, let's just go Pro, run that. And then he back here, we'll go down to the bottom, add a new message, paste that in, run it and see. I'm actually really impressed by how fast this is, but then to be fair, the speed at which it runs, is that really a good indication of the model? Because I mean, A, normally fast models are bad models. You heard it here first. But B is that how fast the model is in inference, I'm pretty sure it's like one of the biggest limitations is hardware. But the cool thing with uh, DeepSeek is obviously the way they had um, redone some of the hardware um, programming essentially for DeepSeek. That's why DeepSeek R1 was this big crazy thing. It's because the re, or was it R1 or V3, whatever, whatever one it was, basically they had uh, kind of reverse engineered some of the some of the coding for the actual GPU itself, which is pretty cool. So anyway, copy this here. Let's go and paste it into Prover. Save that, and then we'll open up this one here. This is Gemini. We'll save Gemini, bam. And then ChatGPT, we should watch it in here. Edit that. So first, let's see ChatGPT. Let's see how he's gotten on with the physics portfolio. So let's just allow everything here, that's fine. So, Jane Doe, computational physicist and applied mathematician. I mean, this website looks horrific. Pendulum simulation, four real series. I don't even know what any of these things are, which probably makes it good. Or any of them. I mean, I know what this is. I know what this is, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I mean, that looks absolutely awful. Let's go and see what Gemini's got. Looks much better. Um... Yeah, there's a bit more of stuff going on here. Lagrangian, is that legit? Is that a real thing? Calculated the positions of the five. Right, so I mean, I even like the way it's talking about physics more here. Seems a bit more legit. So, moment of truth, let's see what Provo's got. Bam. Jane Do I mean, this... Whoa. What happened there? That's an awful website. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't like any of that. So what we'll do is we'll get it to pick one of the projects and make another graphic about that. Um, so let's do something. Let's let it be uh, creative a little bit here. 
So it's going to work or am I taking up too much of the, the RAM? So I'm going to do one more test here. I'm going to try and make it make a game out of one of the projects that it's given us. You see what it does. So I'm like, select a project from the site and turn it into a 3JS one page HTML game. Make it super mathy and realistic. Be, um, yeah, now that's probably fine. I was going to say be creative, but that's not its forte. So we'll send this in. Oops. And run it. And we'll do the same here. Because I want to see if it can actually. Obviously, creating websites and stuff, I've just seen, is not its forte. So instead, we're going to get it to actually. Do some mathy stuff, some stuff that's in its its wheelhouse. Where is it? Is it gonna? Oh, it's still working. It's still doing stuff. Thinking. I don't know. You're thinking. You're actually doing stuff. Right. So that's good. And we we'll see. Um. Basically, compare the judgment and their ability to to execute. So let me rerun that. Cause I think it's not working. I have broken hug and face by trying to get it to be too realistic. Right, so you're done. Let's open you up and see what you've created is. Pendulum Pump Game. <laughs> nice name, let me see. So click anywhere to pump the pendulum. Whoa. Now what did the, will it slow down? Or will it keep going forever? Does it have infinite physics? Does it have gravity but no friction? I don't know, we'll come back and see what he's looking like in a minute. Right, so you're saying you're done. Let's copy this. We'll paste this into Gemini. Bam. Let's open you up. Gemini. Bam. So, Lagrangian Point Simulator, Earth, Moon System, blah, blah, blah. Click anywhere on the orbital plane to launch a test part. Cool. Where's the orbital plane? Right, so that's broken. And um, this guy doesn't want to do anything here now. Um, so let me, let me stop this, unless it's run out of tokens, so let me instead paste it into here, copy this whole thing, we'll delete it from the beginning, then we'll go in here, so run that, see if it comes back with something, or have I used up all my tokens, I don't know what's happening here, we're just going to need to go and say that it's completely broken, so anyway, um, long story short here is that it appears to be better for the physics engine side of things. And I think this is where it becomes interesting into how these new models are going to be leveraged. Because sure, this is a mathematical proof model, right? And it's going to be leveraged for that. And as people were saying on Twitter, you know, I wish I had this when I was at school or whatever. Yeah, perfect. If you want to learn some math, some data science, it's probably amazing, right? But generally, I think for like, if you were to create a game, it'd be cool to have this LLM to help you build the game engine, to help you implement the physics but maybe not to actually design the thing. And that's where it starts to become important to look at the ability of AI agents and AI to be distinct actors in a team that work together on a project, for example, right? And how um, they all have different skills and personalities and that kind of thing. So yeah, interesting. It's pretty cool that they've released a new model and that 